it's an honor to be asked to be here today. They're, they were struggling with my title. Can I call you a commissioner? What do I, you know, are you a former? And I always said, my, I'm Karen, so just we'll go from there. But um, um, it is, uh, I was also saying that um, last night, I'm, I'm trying to clean up some of the stuff I brought from the office, and I found an old uh, scrapbook that my mother-in-law had put together for me when I first got elected. And I was telling Alex Dreyfus one of the big issues in 1984 when I first got elected was whether or not the county was going to contribute to the Kravis Center becoming the Kravis Center. And we did, and it was a political issue at the time. It was an issue during the campaign, uh, and I supported it. And of course, my opponent did, but I wanted, they got $5 million, so um, that's all that counts. Uh, it's, yeah, hey, it, it takes a partnership. Uh, our $5 million didn't matter if uh, Alex and the city hadn't come together to match the rest of it, so. Um, I, I, it, was, it was an opportunity for me when I was looking at this yesterday to sort of reflect on on starting in the county. I'm a native Floridian. I was born in Key West. I'm a Navy brat and a Pratt brat. My dad and mom moved us up here when I was five. I lived in North Palm then. I live in North Palm now. My mom and dad are still there. Today's their 65th wedding anniversary, so we're all celebrating that. But I had an opportunity to see Palm Beach County as a kid when military trail didn't exist, no 95s. The airport was the old Morrison Field, for those of you that might remember what it was back then. And so I had a chance to see that when I was growing up and uh, was hired actually by a former commissioner um, when I was 22 years old to work in the environmental control officer office. He was the environmental control officer. His name was Dennis Kaler. He hired me, uh, then he ran for office, and then he retired. I was encouraged to run in 1984, and I said, and okay, I guess I could. I was not sure it was right, but I had you know, been in the office for eight years, and so I had that experience and decided to do it. At the time, we ran countywide. And I think governance of the commission in the next couple of years is gonna be an issue that I think the public is gonna to have to address because now with term limits of eight years, there's really no opportunity for the institutional knowledge. Um, but when I came in, so I had the experience from being in the office, uh, I had the experience that I thought was important also of being a native, of having grown up here, of seeing the changes, and wanting to positively balance change that we knew was gonna happen, because it's right, in, in, in the mid, early 80s like that, that's when all the development was starting in Palm Beach County. The Boca Raton, Boynton Beach area was just booming. It was huge, the numbers of projects that were coming in front of us, and, and, the, and the hue and cry from the folks down south saying, wait a minute, I moved here to get away from this stuff, what are you doing? And so we had to try to figure out how to, how to balance that lifestyle that you were going to have change, you were going to have new growth, but that it was a positive impact on those of us that were already here. So that was the challenges of the 80s. One of the things that was a big issue was the fact the environment, that it was an important component of the quality of life that we enjoyed here. And I realized uh, after a while that you weren't going to be able to regulate pre uh, preserving it. You were going to have to buy it, or you weren't going to be able to preserve the amounts that people were really looking for. You just couldn't ask a developer to take out his project, make it a preserve, and the other half to have his houses on it. It just wasn't working that way. So we went to the public in 1991, and uh, we had mapped out all the pieces that we thought would create a network of preserve. And we went to the public, and they overwhelmingly supported a $100 million bond issue for land acquisition for preserve. And of that $100 million that we first spent preserving it, or buying it, uh, actually ended up being about $300 million worth of land value that we've been able to, to buy with it. So it really gave us an opportunity from, and I call this like painting a picture. You get to put the important parts on the painting, um, and then you add into it the other important parts, like the jobs, and the housing, and the schools, and all the rest of it. So that bond issue in 1991, I think, was a first step in and moving in the direction of, of the quality of life that we were looking for in Palm Beach <laughs> County. Um, all, along the way, uh, we did uh, something in, uh, that no other county in Florida has done. We went back to the public. Uh, people don't realize it, and I'd love to get the Civic Association involved in the Ag Reserve. It's a unique uh, location in the United States. It's south of Boynton Beach Boulevard, west of the Turnpike. It is the only place where you can farm year-round. They don't freeze down there, and they have the right soil type. The uh, Piro Farms, the Piro Peppers, if you like peppers, they come from that area. They produce them there year-round and ship them all over the country. 
And most people don't realize that we have that type of uh, ag uh, down in the ag reserve. So it's something that we decided was important, and we went to the public, and the public said, yep, it is important. Let's make sure we preserve it. We showed them the pieces of property that we would need. They agreed uh, on the referendum, and we ended up spending $100 million down in the ag reserve also of your money. Now the big bad is how to keep it because it's prime real estate property and you got some developers who'd like to convert it into asphalt. And uh, so it really is something that I think we need to re-educate the public on the value of it so they can see the investment that they made and how it's paying off. You know, to me, this country has to make sure, like we learned with oil, we don't want to rely on other countries for food. And Florida is a big ag state and Palm Beach County is one of the biggest in the state of Florida. And most people don't realize it because they don't see it can I turn it off? Or? Sorry. Um, so so um, it's something that I think needs to be a re-education for the public to make sure that their investment is, is well served and, and uh, that they realize the value of it, and, and not just for us, but for the United States and for the country. So um, that was another milestone, I think, for us. Um, of course, I've worked with your association so well. I appreciate so much the knowledge and the information. Uh, we have had a lot of good budget years, um, and during those budget years, we did talk about spending and, and how much we should save. But I will tell you, during those good budget years, if we hadn't had the good revenue that we did, I was, we saved a lot. We got criticized for saving a lot. But I kept saying, this isn't going to last, this, this thing we're in. And so we need to save money to help offset the future budgets that we're going to have. So we had quite a bit of money in savings. But it also allowed us the opportunity to uh, do the Scripps Research Institute and Max Planck Society to bring them to Palm Beach County. We were in competition uh, in Florida with four or five other counties. Um, lots of uh, uh, big opportunities for Scripps to be anywhere. We were able to get them here because we had the financial capability of, of spending the money. We had a little bit of a real estate drama that's ended up costing us a little more than it needed to. Um, but it's in the right spot in the Abacoa development. The scientists are doing amazing things that I don't think the public is aware about all the great things they're doing. Um, by having Scripps here now, one of the things that Dr. Lerner, who was the former president of Scripps, said to us is think big. Think big for your spinoff companies. Think big for your other companies that are coming in. And so he himself brought the Max Planck Society over here and he said, you, you ought to come to Jupiter, Florida, and see you know, what's going on here. And they're like, Jupiter, Florida? Why would we come to Jupiter, Florida? <laughs> Brought some scientists over, sat down with the script scientists, and said, you know what? This could really work. So they are here in Jupiter, in Palm Beach County, when they could have been in Boston, North Carolina, any, uh, California, any other place in the country. They decided to open their uh, uh, Florida headquarters here. Uh, across from Scripps. And when you watch the synergy of what's going on with the two of them, they can walk across the uh, hallways together, they're, they're, they're communicating, they're doing all these things that they had never thought of doing before. The, the new CEO of the Max Planck Society is from Duke uh, University. And when he was recruited to come down here to Max Planck, he said uh, to his colleagues, were saying, well, why would you go to Florida? You know? And he goes, well, they've offered me this great position. And he said, when he got here, he was so impressed with quality of life here. He was so impressed with what was going on with Scripps and the relationship. He was afraid he'd be here by himself. He said there's this communication, this sharing of information that isn't going on anywhere else, you know, maybe in the country. So uh, it's really a great dynamic. We were able to do that because we had the resources available. It was a great timing for, to be able to do it. We've been real interested in Florida and Palm Beach County to try to diversify our job base. We relied on tourism, agriculture, and construction. Construction eventually was going to fade out, and, and we're seeing some of that as uh, uh, there's not much land development, uh, available anymore. So we're really trying to diversify the job base here and not rely on that third uh, wheel. And we've done that with uh, the biosciences with Scripps and Max Planck. We've done it with um, aerospace. It's OK. I, I don't even know if this works, but um, we've done it now also with aerospace, of course, Pratt uh, & One of the things that brought me, my family here, um, has done a lot of downsizing, but we've had a lot of spinoff companies come from that downsizing, and so it's uh, really exciting to see the uh, quality of uh, engineering, and now we're trying to get the education system revamped so that we can produce those engineers to fill all these jobs. 
So it's, it's really a good uh, positive uh, future in terms of jobs and for this economy. Um, the future, of course, we've all been through the tough times. And it hasn't been fun, both personally and professionally and in and, and the government. We, uh, people don't stop asking for services during this type of a recession. They ask for more services. Uh, the, you know, what you saw with the foreclosures and families needing things. And we opened a homeless center because, believe it or not, we had that many more homeless centers, uh, homeless families that we needed to take care of. So we've, we've had those challenges and we've met them. Slowly, uh, as was said, uh, I did not agree that we should raise taxes during that time. I felt like we needed to uh, look at programs we were providing, look at capital projects, things like that. Um, I, I know there are efficiencies that we can provide over there, and it's something I want to work with your committee on and being able to focus on exactly where we can do that. Hello? Anyway, I'm almost done with my speech, but that's good. Um, anyway, so there, there's, there's a lot of opportunities in the future. One of the things that we need to look for with the county and make sure what we do is that once the revenue starts coming in again, we just don't start, start spending it. It really needs to be an opportunity to hold the line, to look at millage reduction, to save money again, and to do some more capital projects. So we really have uh, kind of our road building program and our resurfacing program and our restriping. If you're out there driving and you notice she can barely see the lines on the road. It's because we've really cut back on those types of programs. Um, so I, that's going to be the challenge in the future is when you have money, sometimes you like to spend it, but sometimes it's better either to give it back to the, those that gave it to you or to save it for that next, next cycle that we know is going to happen. Um, the future, I think, is going to be challenging. We were talking about shoreline protection. You have a committee on that. Um, in my new normal now, I'm uh, volunteering to be on committees, and one of them is a beach committee that um, actually uh, Singer Island has put together. They want it to be an entire coastline that I'm going to encourage you guys to be a part of, too, to really sit down and talk about shoreline protection, not just uh, in front of one particular condominium or residential area or, or hotel. The entire shoreline needs to be addressed, and uh, DEP is starting to have that mindset, Department of Environmental Protection, but it really is going to have to take a collective effort of everybody who has a shoreline to sit down and do it together. And that's what this committee is going to do, and that's what I've offered to do with them as a, as a board member, is sit down with state officials and Washington. And also people like the surf riders who object to everything that we want to do, that we're told professionally we have to do, um, but they are able to stop us in our tracks in doing what that is. We need to look at that long picture. We need to look at it from... Uh, one end of the county to the other end of the county. So it's something that I think we have to work on in the future. It is going to be a challenge. Um, uh, for those that do or don't believe in climate change, I think some of us are starting to think it's, you know, it's really something to think about. There's a climate summit uh, happening in Jupiter this um, next week at the Jupiter Beach Resort. Uh, Palm Beach, Dade, Broward, and, and Monroe counties have come together as a compact to start looking at climate change issues and how we need to address them. Um, I think we're seeing with some of the storms um, that you're, you know, the, it's going to be harder and harder to make sure that shoreline is protected if we don't look at it uh, globally and, and, and uh, as a whole. So we're starting to do that. Um, Monroe County certainly is seeing the effects of climate change. They're already having to raise the level of some of their highway systems because of uh, what's happening with the uh, sea, sea level rise. So I think it's something that's going to have to go hand in hand with uh, shoreline protection. So I, I think the, the new normal, as we call it, is going to be trying to think out of the box in the future, uh, addressing uh, some local issues. Like I said, I've enjoyed so much in the past working with the Civic Association. Uh, Peanut Island is not going away. Um, they were just waiting for me to leave. And, um, but they don't, what they don't know is that I'm not leaving. And uh, I'm still going to be uh, working to make sure that they do not turn that into a commercial venture. They don't they not only want a restaurant, they want a bed and breakfast, they want to do all sorts of things over there. So uh, it's going to be something to stay on top of over here. Working with the port to make sure their expansion is uh, suitable for them but also uh, does not affect the quality of life in Palm Beach. And also the deepening and the dredging of the intercoastal. There has been a proposal made uh, to try to deepen the um, not only the uh, inlet but also the area up here. So bigger yachts uh, can get in here to attend the boat show, to be taken care of by Rogovich and some of the other big boat companies. They want to come here. They simply don't have the depth to get here. That certainly has to be monitored. You saw what happened with the inlet after the storm. 
the sand got into the inlet, now it's an unsafe inlet, so there has to be a continuing working effort to dredge it. Uh, working with Washington and the Army Corps of Engineers is uh, mind-boggling at best. Um, and my goal is to get to Washington and find out who those people are in the fisheries. I, I don't know who they work for, I don't know who they are, I just know they get to say no and nobody challenges them. So uh, really that's, that's what we, we have to get our arms around. So I, uh, as I said, I'm uh, not going away. I am uh, serving on, hope they've been asked to serve on some boards to do some work with folks and I'm just really looking forward to that next phase of my public service. Um, I'm going to uh, and volunteer with the environmental community because they always need help and they uh, probably have the least amount of funds. But um, anyway, I've really enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed the privilege of being able to do this at such an important time in our community. Uh, it has meant a lot to me and I've always appreciated your support. You've been uh, always there for me and I've appreciated that very much. And I'm looking forward to working together in the future. And, um, be happy to stop and answer any questions or other questions for Yes. You spoke about the savings and then the investment in in scripts. Um, can you uh, just kind of recap for us how did as a county what did we put into it and how do you view the returns at this point? It's, it's too early to see the numbers returns in terms of, because it's just been, believe it or not, seven years. The investment, unfortunately, was more than it needed to be because we had the little real estate drama, as I refer to it, at the Mecca Farms, the location. Uh, we spent quite a bit of money out there, $100 million, and haven't been able to recoup that investment, and probably won't. Um, but of the, other, the rest of the money, of the buildings that we built and all that, I think in the next uh, 10, 15 years, with the jobs that it'll bring. We're already seeing spin-off com companies. The Alexandria company, once Scrip was located at Abacoa, built an office building for incubator space. So you're seeing that synergy starting to come together and that financial input. Lots of companies looking. Um, and we're looking for venture capitalists to, uh, uh, to make the expansion of those work. But like I said, I, I think Scripps is kind of a, really a hidden secret if you knew some of the things that were coming out of there. And, and I served at, on the Bioscience Advisory Board, and our job was to make sure that first enough there was enough, or enough space, industrial space available for those expansions. But we've also tried to get out there and make sure that the public is aware of all the great, really great things that they're doing over at Scripps and Max Planck, and we need to continue to do that. So I think it's a huge, I mean, when you see what's happening even in our education system, the level of improvement on what you know kids are learning and the sciences, and now we're going to do the same with the engineering, is really um, taking its toll. But it's going to be probably 15, 20 years before you see that financial one. I, I don't think at the end of the day there's a price you can, I think you're going to see our investment <coughs> triple over time. Jim? Yes? Have you had is, have you had any other requests to move here? I mean, any of the same stature as we, we have had uh, requests, um, but we had to be careful about how much money, you know, we don't have all that money. We, we had money, Scripps was the, uh, clearly the key, was one of the starter. Max Planck, I think we gave them about $78 million. Some of the other companies that did come here, Torrey Pines, uh, the board was not willing to give the same level of funding to them because they didn't think they were as big, so Torrey Pines is in St. Lucie County. Um, so we haven't had any new big since Max Planck, um, but Max Planck's only been here for a couple of years. They're just opening their headquarters next week. So after, uh, it, it, I think what you're seeing with Scripps and Max Planck is that they're seeing the benefit of going to their own partners around the country and around the United States and saying, you really ought to think about setting up shop here with us and seeing what we're doing. Because really what they're doing isn't happening anywhere else. So it's, there, there are two newest ones for now, and I think we're going to keep recruiting. Smaller companies we brought, and spinoffs. Are we beyond this corruption county reputation? <laughs> the question, beyond the corruption county, that, that was one of the most painful times in, in serving in the county because I love this community, and overall we do a great job. I would say yes. And you're going to hear, this is one of the things that I've committed to do on my own with... Um, um, City of Palm Beach Gardens, Town of Jupiter. The Inspector General was uh, voted on as a ballot issue. It was, it was, 
It was said that if we had an inspector general, we would be, all the corruption would be go away because we would have this extra set of eyes. And if you read the newspaper today, you see that Palm Beach County has set the role model for what to do with ethics reform. So I believe we're on our way, and uh, hopefully the state of Florida will learn from us. One of the things that you're going to be hearing from me is that we kind of overdid it. You know, the government, we either don't do it enough or we do it too much. Um, what we've overdone with the inspector general, and I want to share this with you so that, because the newspaper's not getting it the way I'm describing it. We also, we have a charter, we're a charter county, which means in 1984, the public said we want uh, local governance through a charter county. Um, as part of the Charter County, we created three positions, County Attorney, Internal Auditor, and County Administrator. Those are the three employees that work for the Board of County Commissioners. The rest of them work for those three people. We already have an internal audit function, an independent internal auditor. He works for the board. We hire them, him, and we fire him if necessary. What's happened with the Inspector General is we, as a board, because people were putting so much pressure on us that we had to have so much oversight, and the newspaper was writing bad things about us that we didn't agree with them, we included an audit function as part of her job. Not just the contract review for fraud, waste, and abuse, not the things that were on the ballot that she voted for. What we did was we added a duplication of an audit function um, that you're already paying for. The internal auditor for Palm Beach County, his budget's about a million and a half and probably should be a little bit more because he has a few staff members he needs to replace. The, in the inspector general, she has a million and a half. Um, dollars for her internal audit function, and she pretty much can pick and choose where she wants to go, um, even though our internal auditor says, well, when she shows up, I go somewhere else. What kind of business does that? You have a plan, and somebody decides, and sh this inter in uh, inspector general doesn't do that. It's my proposal trying to settle a lawsuit that the cities have si filed against the county on the funding of the inspector general is to take that audit provision out and let each city who wants to contract with the inspector general to have an audit function do that. And then the budget will be less. We will be able to charge a quarter of a percent on contracts, which was the original intent. And the county will be able to afford that. We won't be duplicating services for audit functions. And um, so it's something you're hopefully going to be hearing about a little bit more. And I'd love to work with you all to explain it better about that. Because I don't think anybody wants to pay for two people doing the same thing. Oh, sorry. Do, do you believe that the current county commissioners are both knowledgeable and comfortable about the long-term financial impact of their compensation systems with regard to retirement and future health care benefits of all the constituencies, the sheriff's department, plus all the town and county employees, and the and what what's controllable within the educational structure? Do they know what the impact is, and are they comfortable? With they, I would believe they're somewhat knowledgeable about it. Um, and, I, and I say that because they're fairly new. Everybody's pretty new up there. And this is a big business that they're getting their feet into. When you talk about the, um, the pension system and things like that, for county employees and for, uh, I believe, the sheriff's office, they are in the Florida retirement system. Totally different managed system out of FRS, and the information that is out there now is that that's a fairly well-run organization that has the financial capabilities. Yes, I believe the commission, well, the commission will have to look down the road at changing the amount of investment they make uh, into some of these funds. I think the state of Florida is probably looking at doing that. I know that we're restructuring our fire contracts for their pension investments, uh, how much uh, we uh, contribute to them. So. I believe they're educated on it, but they're all fairly new. And they're only going to be here for eight years. Um, to me, I, I had never supported term limits, not just for my sake, but I felt like the election process is your, is your term limit. If you don't like what they're doing, then you go out and you pick and choose um, who you, you, know, you want to serve you. And with the eight years that we have, they're going to come and go, and there's not going to be any opportunity to have the history. It took seven years to get scripts. And that would be, you'd have to be hitting the ground running when you first got elected to know how to, to because that was a challenge. I could write a book about that, just that one process alone on how we had to compete with Orlando and others and some of the strategies that we had to provide to be able to get them here. So I hope that answered your question. I think they're fairly well versed, but. As you're well aware, and most of us in this room are painfully aware, <coughs> about 80% of our tax dollars flow from across this bridge over to Palm Beach County. 
Yes. Um, yet, because we're a small population and a small voter base, um, it's very difficult uh, to have a strong voice uh, in Palm Beach County and some of the issues that are important to us. It's almost impossible to get residents here uh, on commissions um, that might influence. As you're aware, we've made some initial attempts to, to have our voice heard, but what more could we be doing in your view that have our voice heard and have an impact in the county on issues that are important to us? Yeah, I, I, it's going to be partnerships. You're going to have to reach out to other communities who are willing to sit down and share issues because there are a lot of communities that feel that way, like I, isolated, not isolated, but like nobody's listening. And so really it's going to have to be partnerships in terms of uh, and it's not just going to be in your you know, central part of the county, it's going to be north and south also. Because with single member districts, um, somebody from Boca doesn't have to listen to you all because you don't vote for them. And so if you get a synergy of, and, I, and it's something that I had advocated for a long time, communities in the southern part of the county working with you and others in the north end, all of a sudden, one of the one of the first, one of the things that I learned it's, it's, when I say people is you just need to learn how to count to four. That's it. Got to learn how to count to four, and you can make it happen. It's uh, and it's what I did with scripts, and it's what I've done with a lot of the projects. I just need four people. In other words, I need three more besides me. Um, and so that's really I think the way in the future is to as an organization to re reach out like the speech committee um, to join it. They're trying to make that a shoreline coastline uh, organization not just for Singer Island, but everybody along the coastline from Jupiter to Boca. And uh, so I think it's going to be those types of partnerships reaching out. What is interesting on some initial attempts that have been made at that, some of the other communities have been reticent to join with us because of fear of offending some of the commissions and stopping the flow of funds back to them on, on their particular interests. And I think you can find enough common ground. And it's not going to be all groups. There's going to be groups that are going to have like minds of yours, that are going to have some of the same issues um, that you'll be able to partner with. You don't have to partner with the whole world. Uh, I don't think the Delray Alliance and you are going to partner uh, because you have totally different issues. But I think there are communities that um, will partner with you. There's a group um, out of, um, it's northern and western Palm Beach County. Um, it's northern county something or other. It's communities, Mirasol, Mirabella, uh, Ibis, Ballon Isles, um, all of those communities that have come together as a group, knowing that they want to have a voice too. And I think you're a member of them. So yeah, I mean, it's going to be those kinds of groups. And then figuring out how to uh, make it work effectively. And that's where I think you need to reach out. And I've got some contacts in South County to bring it all together. I mean, we need somebody from South County who cares about Pima Island and, and doesn't care, you know, because they don't want to lose a vote up there or a friend up there on the dais. Um, so that's really, I think, what you have to do. Well, you maybe you'll help us on that. I would love to. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.